That's a pretty easy job, Mike, at 225 days off. And uh, what does that give you? Just uh, 140 or so of work. But uh, those who know the sport will know that the training is every bit as hard as the racing. And uh, the temperatures today might emphasise that. It's minus six here in Sweden. Uh, we, I think uh, two years ago it was about minus 26 and they still race. So uh, it's relatively uh, warm. The snow's in good condition. There's not a lot of wind to speak about. So fairly friendly conditions for the opening individual event of the year. And it's the big one, Mike, the 20-kilometer. I don't quite understand why they put the hardest race first. <laughs> it is quite strange, and only three 20 kilometers in the whole racing season from somewhat 30 races. You're right, why put it first? Well, I suppose they're at the freshest, they're fittest, they've been preparing for this. Get one out of the way earlier, of course, one at the World Championships uh, in February as well. Well, let's run down the list of competitors today. That's the first uh, sheet. We've got 104 in all. Keep your eye closely peeled to see who is going last. There you see Martin Foucault. He's drawn bib number 15. He's halfway down the first group. It's the perfect start for the defending champion here from... Uh, from France, and there you see Emil Hegler Svensson, number 26. He's won the first race of the season before. It's going to take quite an effort from anyone to beat him. Jakob Fack, what an exciting prospect he is. Of course, he's the world champion in this discipline. Further down the order, Christoph Suman of Austria. The Austrians were nowhere to be seen last year. This is where it all went wrong three years ago. Can they get it back on track in Sweden this time round? The British have two competitors racing today, Jackson and Laponda. Laponda going off 99, Jackson going number 70 at the bottom of that particular sheet. And uh, one or two names that you won't have seen, but there, there were no retirees from the top 30 in the World Cup at the end of the last year. There are three people missing, we'll mention that later on, but that's due to injury or illness. Uh, Simon Fulcar, perhaps the most noticeable who has compartment syndrome, and anyone who's had it will uh, sympathise with him. He had an operation two days ago to sort that out, and we're hoping we see him in the uh, World Championships later on in the season. Now, just one sheet to go. Have a look at the bottom name. It is none other than Ole Einar Bjorndalen of Norway. <laughs> gets the last start number. He will not be a happy man this evening, but we'll see how he gets on. This isn't usually an event he does too well in. It did say 14k in our wind. Well, welcome back to Sweden just in time for the first starter of the first individual race of the 2012-2013 season. I know a few of you have been uh, longing for this day and uh, suffering from withdrawal season, uh, symptoms throughout the off-season. But uh, we're back in business. We've got a massive race coming up. We stay in Ostersund for the whole of this week and then we head down to Austria where the snow conditions are improving. Uh, but things can change very quickly there. Nice to see Michael Schlesinger who gets the very first start he's a great uh, ambassador not just for the Czech Republic but for the sport as well Mike a good performance from him in the mix relay the Czech Republic taking third place last Sunday oh, it's a wonderful start from them, Patrick especially the world championships in February it's over in Nova Mesto and in the Czech Republic for the first time and uh, they have started their season so well Michael Schlesinger was second here last year in this race. Yeah, I hope he does better than he did in the World Cup there last year. Simon Schempf is going number two, 30 seconds behind Schlesinger, 26th in the World Cup last year. He's he's an up-and-coming member of the German team, and with Mickey Grice not quite retired, but he must be on the verge of it, uh, unless, of course, he's going to be tempted to go to Sochi. I think Simon Schempf could play more of a role this year. Yes, I think he can, and Simon Schempf, his strength, not quite as strong on the skis, his strength really comes down to his shooting so he must be feeling confident on this one today wearing bib number three is the olympic mass start champion 27 year old yevgeny ustigov of russia he's really good over the sprint distance he's really good under pressure i'm not totally convinced by his individual performances so far where every shot is so important remember it's a minute penalty now when this this is, we'll talk about this later on mike but just have a think of is the penalty still fair at a, at a minute uh, we will have time to discuss that once they're all out on the tracks but with 104 starters, we better focus on them. Now, the best of the Canadians, Jean-Philippe Legelic of Canada. Brilliant in 2010 when we were in Vancouver. 
He's faded a little since then. Well, he has, and he, what he did in Vancouver, you mentioned that, eighth in the sprint race there. He was only brought in for two races. And, uh, of course, this race actually last year was one of his best in 14th position, but he did have three, three races in the top 15. Well, the Russian fans are here, the Swedish fans are here as well, as you would expect. They haven't had to travel too far as we watch Dmitry Malishko of Russia start. That's the second Russian uh, going in group number one. We got three Russians in group one because Anton Shapulin will start number 22. What does that tell us about the conditions? Well, certainly, and when you look, of course, Svensson's there at the front. Lars Berger, we know that he can ski fast. I've heard his shooting is much calmer this season. So, certainly, most of the coaches opting for the earlier star position. Kari Koiv of Estonia, 29 now. He comes from Elva. Some of you may have been there. I can't claim to have done that. Tobra looks also racing for uh, Estonia today. He's number 48 and only two. It's a smaller team, the uh, Estonians, so we wish them well today. That, of course, is Matan Fokar, who we've uh, just had 15 minutes with. Uh, and we'll get more of him as the season goes on. We've got an opportunity to spend a lot of time with him over the summer months. Now, Sergei Novakov, one of the older members, the Olympic individual champion. He didn't win it by skiing extremely fast. He won it by shooting the perfect 20. Yes, sir. And, and the shooting, Novikov is always going to shoot. I, 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 when you say that, sometimes it, they don't, but uh, he always shoots to a very high percentage. Rafael Poré has been working on his ski speed, so something special this season from the Belarus, I would expect. Now, Tim Burke, who was in the top 20 of the World Cup standings at the end of last season, bettered in by, only by uh, Lau Bailey, who finished 14th uh, in the standings. So two Americans in the top 20. Jay Hakkinen was only just outside the top 30, so they have have actually taken some positive steps well that's right we have three four uh, Americans here who have placed and put themselves in the top ten quite regularly and uh, we just need the team I think that uh, when they can as a team in the relay lift of performances the confidence will grow as a team Marcus Vindish didn't get a run in the mixed relay on Sunday to Lorenzi and Hoffer so the old boy and the youngster uh, took the place of the men's places in the mixed relay to Loren uh, Vindish is quick He's very quick when he's on form, but the Italians have been far from convincing over the last five years or so. Clement Bauer, one of the most exciting biathletes here. Just watch him start, but also watch him when it comes to the standing shoot. That usually is where he trips himself up. It's a, a somewhat uh, unique technique. It, it is. He is such a talent. They took him to the Olympic Games when he was 19 year old and uh, they said, well, this man is something special and I really think Clement Bauer is. I've never seen him start as slowly as this. So is he focusing purely on the shooting today? Well, let's hope so. This man might be Carl Johan Bergman, one of the stars of last year. Medals from the World Championships. He got himself a World Cup win as well. He's much more result. He's much more relaxed as a result. But the key thing that's changed in his life is he's a dad for the first time. And uh, I'm... Well, you do <laughs> I know well. <laughs> I, I, I know well. And it, it amazes me that he still finds the time to put the training in. It's incredible, isn't it? And uh, you need so, so much backup, good backup, which he has from his wife, of course, former biathlete herself. And uh, he, talking to him in October on the glacier, he is so motivated again. He says there's no pressure. He's achieved what he's wanted. Now he's loving it. Andre Morovitz from the Czech Republic. Now, he, he did 10 sprints uh, last year, and he only cleared the targets on one occasion, so a 10% record. Really, if you want to do well in the sprints, you've, you've got to be, what, 30% shooting 10 out of 10? Ah, you have to be, yeah. Now, if not, you can only get by with missing one target, really. More of it's, it's about 15, 20 seconds off the fastest over the sprint distance. Now, here's a man I want to shoot clear today because I want to see what his potential is. He was uh, a little careless. Did you get his shooting record from last season? A, it's 85%, uh, I think. I haven't got that officially. I will try and dig, <laughs> dig through the paperwork I have here. But uh, Hofer, he certainly improved on his shooting last se season by so much, but it slowed his skiing time down. Yeah.
Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? And that, of course, is the dilemma, dilemma with uh, biathlon as a whole. Ski as fast as you can, you're not going to hit the targets. But if you ski too slowly, you're not going to win even if you do hit the targets. So it's finding the balance. Schlesinger is a man that has certainly mastered it over the years. We saw him on brilliant form way back in 2007. And uh, he had some very good races last year, but a really disappointing visit to his home resort in Nova Mesto, where uh, nothing went right. But I hope uh, he's got his confidence back. The defending World Cup champion, Martin Foucault, about to take his place on the tracks for the first time this year. It was not a successful visit to the world of cross-country World Cups, but uh, I think he'll put that behind him, Mike. He will put it behind him. He was uh, he finished what 47th and one minute 24 behind the best. He set out in Yelavara way up in the Arctic Circle, and I think he was wanting a top five position. He showed Patrick the weekend before, with only being 20 odd seconds behind Petter Nordtug over 15 kilometer. He showed what he what he can give. It didn't go well on the World Cup day though. As Bjorn Ferry starts, Ustigoff posts the fastest time at the first intermediate split, but uh, we won't read too much into that. Bjorn Ferry with uh, good cheer, he's the Olympic pursuit champion, he'll hold on to that for at least another 13, 14 months, uh, and I wonder whether we'll see him in Sochi trying to defend that particular title. I hope so, because uh, Bjorn's very, very talented, top 15 of the world last year. Lal Bailey, the number one American from 2012. Will he keep that going? He started the season strongly. The Americans certainly have the ability across the snow. It's just uh, combining that with the shooting. Malishko coming up to 2.5. Pretty tough loop up to 2.5. Mike's uh, the climbs here in Ostersund are far from easy. It's so deceptive, the hill, as we look down this hill in the camera, it doesn't look much, but you really are hurting uh, with, what, some eight, 900 metres in length climbing up to that high point. Only five World Cups last year for Henrik Labilund of Norway. Perhaps the hardest team of all to get into. Now, nations-wise, Mike, uh, if, if you were to say the big nations, Norway would be in it, Russia would certainly be there, I guess France have to be one of the major nations, Germany uh, <laughs> were within danger of dropping out of that group, but uh, still there. Uh, who else Who else is amongst the big names? You mentioned Austria, certainly with uh, number 19 setting off the Austrians, and Mesotic, he is so regular on the shooting range, but they are a very much an aging team. And so I think I would still put Austria in that top five, six bracket without a doubt. And the Czech Republic, I think, with the world champs out there uh, on their home snow this season, they're going to be an improved team. Well, let's hope so. We need the Americans to join them and we need the Italians to get somewhere near their best. It's a long time since we saw them winning the World Cups. So let's have a look at the wind conditions. It's never easy here in Austin, even with uh, benign conditions over the mix relay on Sunday. There were plenty of misses, and the wind today, well, it's, it's ranged from 7 kilometers an hour up to 15 kilometers an hour, so it's tricky. Ha. The worst possible start to miss the first shot. Now the mind goes into a little mini panic. Little lapse of concentration, maybe, from Michael on that first uh, shot. I almost sensed he was being too careful. When you break your routines to try and be too careful, your pulse or your timing goes a little out. So I think he was just trying to be so careful. Well, as we watch Shemp shoot, maybe this is the time to have the discussion about the penalty. It's a one minute added for every shot missed. Now, in the old days, Mike, when it used to take an hour to get round the 20 kilometers, one minute added was uh, well less less than ten, less than two percent of uh, the total time nowadays they can get round the loop in 45 minutes to 50 it's a much harsher penalty it is i think today's track they'll be struggling to get under what 52 minutes so it's a fair reflection today but i get your point but i still like it i think that uh, and it, because it changes what we normally see in the sprint and the pursuit they shoot rapid fire Today is a different mindset, and I, and I love seeing that aspect of the biathlete. Some can control it, a lot can't. 
Uh, the Russians, who we mentioned last weekend, have been down in Australia doing some summer training and uh, certainly racing well, certainly showing. Have a look at the race results down there.